Mr. President. Senator from Maryland. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. I'm here on the floor today to urge the Senate to move immediately uh, to vote for the confirmation and on the confirmation of Dr. Lori Locasio to be the Undersecretary of Commerce for the Standards and Technology at the Department of Commerce. And also, this is a double-hatted position, also as the Director of the National Institutes of Standards and Technology. Uh, Mr. President, as of today, we have 156 pending nominations on the executive calendar. Uh, these include ambassadorial nominations to important countries like China, Japan, and others all around the world, and that is harming our national security. We be, should be moving forward with them urgently. And then there are a whole number of nominations that relate to very important U.S. domestic agencies. And one of them is this appointment at the National Institute for Standards and Technology. Look, many Americans are aware of uh, the NIH, the National Institutes of Health. Uh, they know that that institute does very important medical research uh, that helps save lives and develop treatments to help Americans and others around the world. In fact, they played a key role in the development of the vaccines against COVID-19. Less well known, but also very important, is the National Institute for Standards and Technology, which plays a key role in supporting American economic competitiveness and supporting innovation for Americans and American companies around the world. They also play an important role in the supply chain effort of the United States. And that, of course, has taken on an added significance in recent months as we experience bottlenecks. So we're only hurting ourselves, we're only hurting our country by refusing to allow this body to move forward on a vote on her nomination. We're essentially saying to this very important institute, this important government entity, uh, we're not going to vote on your leader. So, Mr. President, it's time to move forward on this. Now, I want to talk a little bit about why Dr. Locasio is an exceptional choice for this role. And that's not only because she hails from the great state of Maryland, it's not only because she's a graduate of the University of Maryland, Baltimore, and that she has been a leader in the University of Maryland's research endeavor since 2017. It's also, and most importantly, because she brings to this position three decades of experience working at all levels at NIST, the institute to which she's been nominated to lead. She began her time at the agency as a research staffer and rose to become the acting principal deputy director and associate director for laboratory programs. She was responsible for directing the Material Measurement Laboratory, which is one of NIST's largest laboratories. She also has very intimate knowledge of NIST from her other years of experience there, and she has really touched upon every area of endeavor within the NIST portfolio. As I indicated, this appointment would be important at any time, but it's especially important at this moment as we grapple with supply chain issues. We try to bolster U.S. manufacturing and try to make sure that we manufacture here in the United States essential products that we need. And this body, in addition to focusing on the manufacturing side of the ledger, also understands the importance of investment in vital research and material science in things like quantum computing, artificial intelligence. We passed with an overwhelming bipartisan vote of 68 to 32, the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act. And NIST has very important responsibilities in those areas. And what NIST does there is very important in maintaining and sharpening our position in the world, especially as we address the growing challenge of China. I also want to mention the Manufacturing Extension Partnership uh, that is run out of 
out of NIST, which has played a very important role right now as we've worked to fight uh, these supply chain uh, blockages and also uh, accelerate the, produc the production of personal protective equipment, N95 masks and ventilators. That push was fueled largely by the $50 million that this body helped appropriate for the MEP program in the CARES Act. And again, that's a program housed at NIST helping deal with supply chain bottlenecks when it comes to essential protections uh, from the pandemic. So, Mr. President, there is no justification for blocking this nomination. In fact, all we're doing is tying our hands behind our backs by depriving this important institute of their top leader at a time when we face national challenges on supply chain issues and at a time where we understand that we've got to be at the top of our game when it comes to innovation and cutting edge technologies in so many areas where it's essential uh, to meet the challenge of China and others around the world in global competition. So I would really urge my colleagues uh, to allow this nomination uh, to proceed. Uh, that's the right thing to do for our country. Uh, and I, at this point in time, ask unanimous consent that notwithstanding Rule 22, the Senate consider the following nomination, Executive Calendar 551, Department of Commerce, Lori E. Locasio of Maryland to be Undersecretary of Commerce for Standards and Technology. And that the nomination be confirmed, the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate, that no further motions be in order on the nomination, that the President be immediately notified of the Senate's action. Is there objection? Mr. President. Senator from Florida. Reserving the right to object. First, I want to acknowledge uh, my colleague's interest in uh, the nominee for the National Institute for Standards and Technology. I'm not sure if my colleague is aware, but last month I sent a letter to the Commerce Committee informing them that I would be holding all Department of Transportation and Department of Commerce nominees until the committee hears testimony from Secretary Raimondo and Secretary Buttigieg about the supply chain crisis. Right now, there's nearly 100 ships waiting to dock in California ports to unload their goods, but they're never unable to do so because of President Biden's supply chain crisis. Christmas is just a couple weeks away, and families and businesses are facing empty shelves, shortages on goods and higher prices. And so far, as far as I can tell, I've only, I've only seen Secretary Buttigieg and Secretary Mondo playing TV commentator rather than actually going out to California and solving the problems. It's a long time past, long past time for the Biden administration to tell us exactly what they're doing to solve this crisis and to help the American families. Until we hear from Secretary Buttigieg and Secretary Raimondo on the Commerce Committee, I'll be objecting to all commerce and transportation nominees going through the expedited process here in the Senate. Uh, this isn't personal, it's about accountability. I look forward to hearing from Secretaries Raimondo, Secretary Buttigieg, and then go forward with these nominees. Therefore, Mr. President, I object. Objection is heard. Mr. President, yes, I, I would just ask uh, my colleague uh, in the coming days uh, before the end of the year to reconsider uh, his position. Uh, he is a member of the, the Commerce Committee, um, and he, he knows well that there have been uh, three hearings uh, on supply chain issues, uh, one on May 11th regarding freight mobility, strengthening America's supply chains and competitiveness, on July 15th, implementing supply chain resiliency, on December 7th, uncharted waters, challenges posed by ocean shipping supply lanes, uh, where the committee discussed a whole range of supply chain issues. Moreover, responding to the, these issues, if we're really serious about addressing our supply chain issues, how does it help to deny us the opportunity to vote and put in place the director of an agency that is supposed to help relieve the supply chain bottlenecks. I, I know the senator from Florida uh, had to leave, but it's a very simple question. 
if there's a genuine interest in addressing supply chain bottlenecks and addressing the cost pressures, how does denying NIST a leader help advance that agenda? Clearly, it does not. Clearly, this is harming the U.S. markets at this important time. Clearly, it's, it's harming our supply chain uh, efforts. Uh, clearly, it's harming U.S. competitiveness. So I urge my colleagues uh, to move forward uh, on this nomination. Apparently not today because of the objection, but let's get it done before the end of this year. Mr. President, um, I have no, I'm not going to ask for a quorum call. Thank you. That's, that's it. <laughs> Mr. President, 